Hey guys, how are you doing? I asked you guys to guess what I bought and some of you saw the writing on the seat back behind my head, wilderness, and you guessed, but let me show you now because it's not as simple as you thought. Uh, some of you guessed Outback Wilderness, some of you guessed Cross Trek Wilderness, some of you guessed Forester. Well, I, I got two. I got the uh, Outback Wilderness and the Cross Trek Wilderness. <laughs> because why have uh, one when you could have two? Actually, the Outback is about four months old. It's already been from the Rocky Mountains to the Atlantic Ocean on a cross-country trip. Done, we've done about 20,000 kilometers pulling a 2,000 pound uh, A-liner pop-up trailer. Flawless, amazing, was, a, was fantastic. I loved it so much that I bought the Cross Trek Wilderness as well. And in this video, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what uh, some of the differences are. Now, I'm not uh, sponsored by Subaru and no one's telling me what to say. I've uh, watched some other uh, videos on YouTube and they seem kind of scripted. And then they go on uh, special off-road Subaru prepared uh, roads to, uh, to to show you how great the uh, off-road capability is. I'm just going to uh, talk about some some big differences between the two and some small differences between the two and mention the uh, uh, the Forester as well. So maybe you guys already know all about Subaru and are considering buying one. I'm going to uh, uh, give you some insight that maybe some others haven't given you. Let's do a quick walk around first and then we'll talk about the biggest difference in these two. Outback Wilderness. It's got the uh, the gold little things there that pop off to give you the little hooks for recovery. Geyser blue. It's got the black cladding on the bottom that says Outback. It's got the little, you know, those little gold things there on the kind of, I call it a heavy duty rack that has they show you those, but it's the little clips behind them. Right? Oh! It's got the automatic lift gate. The lift gate sensed that I was behind it and, and opened. <laughs> okay? Uh, I've equipped this one with a trailer hitch that Subaru put on. And then aftermarket this uh, uh, seven pin wiring connector that's connected to the battery and the brake controller inside. We towed, this, this towed flawlessly. Lots of cladding around the, uh, the wheels, the little Outback emblem. Geyser blue, beautiful vehicle. Now Crosstrek, Crosstrek just amps up the cladding. Look at that. Look at that versus that. Why not cover it all in cladding? And it, and it amps up the gold. It's got this whole, it's not just a little clip. It's the whole gold, it's a gold cladded machine. This has, uh, they both have this black on the hood, anti-glare. Which actually works, guys. It actually works, and the Cross Trek has more than the uh, Outback. And I live in uh, in Canada, where uh, in the winter the sun, which is coming from that direction, in the middle of the day right now. Look at the shadows on the ground. In the middle of the day, the sun's at about 25 degrees, so there's constant glare. It's not just morning and night uh, where I'm from for half the year. It's constant glare, and that that uh, hood, the black. Hood really makes a difference. So there's the walk around. I love the way they look, both of them. This one, just in case you didn't know it was a Subaru, they um, they let you know. The biggest difference between the two and the Forester, let's talk Cross Trek Forester and uh, Outback Wilderness packages. The biggest difference in them is the engine, the powertrain, okay? We'll talk, that's the most important difference in all of them. Let's talk about that first. Now the engine is the most important thing in a vehicle. And these three Subarus have three very different engines. All right, start with the Crosstrek, which is the uh, cheapest model. It has a 2.5 liter, uh, 182 horsepower engine. 
Well, the Forester has a 2.5 liter, 182 horsepower engine as well. They're the same, aren't they? No, they're not the same. The Crosstrek produces 178 foot-pounds of torque at 3,700 RPM. The Forester produces 176 foot-pounds of torque, a little bit less, at 4,400 RPM. All right, the torque. Do you guys know what torque is? Do I have to explain what torque is? There's horsepower and torque. Both have the same horsepower, maxed out at some uh, ridiculously high R RPM, like 5,800 RPM. But the cross track has more low end torque. Okay, torque, you wanna undo a bolt, right? You, you put the wrench on the bolt and you apply a force to try and turn that bo bolt. Now the force times the distance, the length of the tool you're using, that's how much torque you can put uh, on the bolt to loosen the bolt. Now, this applies a certain amount of torque with the force I'm applying with my hand. But if that bolt is really tough to move, you, you get a bigger tool, right? Now, I can put the same force on, but this distance is more, more torque. I can turn the bolt easier. The torque is the ability to turn that nut or bolt. Same in a car. Think of torque as the ability to turn the wheels. The higher torque an engine has, the easier it can turn those wheels. And the cross track has higher torque at lower RPM, which means it's, it has an easier time making the wheels turn at a lower RPM. Like maybe when you're going off road, maybe when you're uh, crawling on rocks, and, uh, and, and on dirt, and you're, you're not revving the engine at 5,000 RPM, you're in the low torque range, and you've got to get up a steep hill, or you're doing some off-road work. And that's why, let's do an aside here, get it out of your head that these Subarus can compete at all with any like proper off-road vehicles. Like uh, I had an old Nissan Xterra, which had uh, 280 foot-pounds of torque down at almost idle range. Uh, or something like a Ford Bronco or a or Jeep Wrangler, those proper off-road vehicles. Uh, you put them in four-wheel drive uh, low, or they have a rock crawl mode or whatever they have. That uh, in my Nissan Xterra, I could put it in four-wheel drive low, and I could drive at five kilometers an hour. The engine would be revving at about 2,000, 2,500 RPM. I'd have all the torque that the engine could uh, uh, pump out at low RPM. That thing could crawl up a vertical wall if I had Velcro wheels on Velcro, okay? It had enough power to, to go anywhere uh, if the wheels were gripping the, the ground. Not so for these, okay? You get, that's not the case. And that's what X mode is all about in these uh, wilderness uh, vehicles. The X mode for going off-road. All of them are full-time all-wheel drive, but what X mode does is tries to capture that very valuable torque and send it to the wheels that need it most. So when you're going off-road, if one of your wheels comes off the ground and is just spinning, not doing anything, or spinning on loose gravel or, or sand, what X mode does is it uh, stops sending power to that wheel and it uses the valuable torque and sends it to the other wheels that have traction. So uh, X mode is all about directing that torque to the wheels that can actually do the work, right? So it does a very good job. Uh, these, like, don't get me wrong. These things compared to other cars are, are orders of magnitude uh, better off-road, all right? But uh, comparing to some dedicated rear differential lock, uh, 200, 300 uh, foot-pounds of torque down at 1,000 RPM, rock crawl mode, Ford Bronco, you're not following the Ford Bronco in Moab with this thing. You're just not. But the Crosstrek has more low-end torque than the Forester, all right? Uh, both 182 horsepower, but the Crosstrek is tuned with better low-end torque. Now, the, the Outback is on in a league of its own. The Outback blows both of them away. It has 260 horsepower, up from 182 and it does this with a smaller engine a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine but they call it a high torque 2.4 liter and it pumps out 277 foot pounds of torque down at 2000 rpm it, it has a flat torque 
uh, a curve. You can look at a torque curve for uh, get, getting technical here, but one of the most important things that you should look at at a car that really gives you a feel of how it's going to drive is the torque curve. It's how much torque you have at different RPMs, and you can look at a graph. The, the Outback Wilderness hits maximum torque at 2,000 RPM and stays flat. Two to 4,000 RPM, you've got pretty much full torque. So what's that going to do? This thing is it blows the other two away. Now let me let me uh, explain how those car how these will feel in just layman's terms. Okay, so for the Forester that doesn't have any low end torque and the maximum torque only kicks in at uh, uh, what did I say? Let me check my numbers here. Uh, uh, at uh, four thousand four hundred RPM, and it has one hundred eighty two horsepower. One hundred eighty two horsepower is like that average. Okay. You're going to get in the Forester without even driving it, knowing these numbers. You're going to press on the gas and the RPMs are going to go, well, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. And you're going to be in the car going, huh. it's not really going anywhere. It's not really doing anything. And then when it gets up around 4,500, that's where you have all your, your torque. And horsepower kind of mirrors the torque curve usually. Okay, so that Forester is going to feel, very, they're going to use words like sluggish, underpowered, uh, don't, don't think about passing anyone off the mark. It's going to be a, um, that kind of feel in the vehicle. Now the Crosstrek is going to be a similar. I've driven the Crosstrek and um, it very quickly, when you step on the accelerator, once you get to two, 3,000 RPM, you're getting close to the uh, maximum torque, which is at 3,700 RPM. You're going to hit that uh, sweet spot earlier than in the Forester. It's going to feel uh, uh, more responsive. Uh, you, you, people are going to use words like it's peppy, it's uh, sporty. It's not fast, but it's got a little, you know, it's fun to drive. They're going to use words like that. Now the Outback, which uh, uh, has 260 horsepower and it uh, hits maximum torque or peak torque down at 2000 RPM, and it has a turbocharger, you're going to describe this one as fast off the mark, uh, like a speedy, uh, a, a, like a race car. It, it feels very, very responsive. You press on the uh, accelerator in the wilderness and it takes off immediately. There's no, there's no hesitation because uh, you're idling at 1500, 1500 RPM. You step on the gas pedal and you're immediately at around 2000 RPM. You've got full torque. The thing pulls away. You're going to feel acceleration. You're going to get pushed back in your seat. It is orders of magnitude uh, more powerful than the other two, and that's why it costs more, okay? So the three are completely different, and most people will spend their time looking, what's the infotainment uh, system like? I don't like the trim on the roof of this one. The cladding is a little bit different. Oh, I'm not sure about the color. Okay, those things are all, yeah, most videos are about that, but the, the engine is the most important thing, and by far the Outback has the best engine hands down okay second the cross trek second best engine of the three third forester okay that's how it goes engine wise now powertrain and what i meant by that maybe it's not the right word the cross trek and the forester are the same size and they have the same wheelbase the wheels from front to back are the same distance apart for the forester and the cross trek and they're they have a smaller wheelbase than the Outback, which is a longer vehicle. And I noticed this when I drove the uh, Outback versus the Crosstrek. A longer wheelbase by about 10, 12 centimeters, about what is that, about uh, four inches. Doesn't seem like much, but when you're on the highway cruising at 100, 110 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour in the US, and you just put a, apply a little bit of uh, uh, jiggle in your steering wheel. You know how some people they kind of jiggle the steering wheel when they're driving. You apply a little bit of input to the steering wheel. The front wheels turn just a little bit. To, uh, you don't feel that in the uh, uh, in the Outback. You you would describe it as a smooth, luxurious, steady, solid ride. Whereas in the Crosstrek, which has a, a shorter wheelbase, any little input to the steering wheel, it feels like the car is kind of jerking a little left right not not in a bad way but the, more sensitive to input on the steering wheel not as smooth right 
and if you think about this, the, the reason that works is because uh, let's look at the extreme, right? If you if you had a car that was 50 feet long and you turn this and you're cruising at 100 kilometers an hour and you turn the steering wheel just a little bit, uh, that makes the front end of the car move one inch. Your car is 50 feet long, the front end moves one inch. That car angle hasn't changed at all. You don't feel anything when you're in the uh, driving. You just feel you don't feel any acceleration left or right. It's smooth. All right now let's look at the other extreme let's say a car you're in a car that was only three inches long <laughs> you, you know you're a little man in a car three inches long and you made a, a little movement with your steering wheel and the front end moved an inch all of a sudden that car's jerked 45 degrees and you're going to feel accelerations that move you around in the in the seat okay and that's why short wheelbase cars don't feel as good on a long road trip they're not as comfortable all right uh, but short wheelbase probably better for off-roading, right? Because imagine a, a car 50 feet long, it's with 12 inches of clearance. Well, I've got 12 inches of clearance, but your car's 50 feet long. You're going to high center when you go off-road, right? Because the undulations in uh, off-road driving, uh, the, the longer wheelbase vehicles sometimes struggle more off-road. So think of this: uh, if you're interested in a, a Ford Bronco or a, or a Jeep Wrangler. Should you buy the two door or the four door? The two door or the four door? The four door has a much longer wheelbase. Well, are you gonna be driving it in the, uh, uh, on the highway a lot or are you gonna be driving off road? Because the driving, the difference between driving a two door Ford Bronco and a four door Ford Bronco on the highway is like night and day because of the, the wheelbase. Anyways, those are the, that's the most important thing, the engine. And, and the drivetrain and how it's set up mechanically, okay? Now all of these, all of the Subarus, uh, the wilderness ones you get, uh, uh, they're jacked up, they're higher clearance than the other uh, trims. They have more of a off-road tuned suspension with more uh, movement in the suspension so the wheels can keep contact with the road when you're going off-road. Uh, they all have the, the, the trim and stuff. They all have Subaru all-wheel drive. Okay, and they all have CVT transmissions, which I'm not going to talk about in this video, but we could talk about it in another video. So, so there you go. Let's look uh, at some of the, the, the stupid little things that are different. Okay, let's have a look at that. Uh, both these vehicles have an approach and, and departure angle, uh, just talking about off-road now. And uh, Subaru says that the approach angle on both of these is uh, 20 degrees. And when I look at the when I look at the outback here, you see that there's a lot of nose of the vehicle sticking out in front of that tire, right? That's a, that's a lot of front nose. And the cross track to me look like well, there, there's not as much nose there. So I thought that the approach angle for the cross track would be uh, better, but it's not. It's 20 degrees. Uh, I, I've watched some other videos, uh, some other YouTube providers that they say stuff like, uh, They've cut away a little bit of uh, here on the on the bumper. Can you see that? And that makes the approach and the approach angle better. Now that's just not true. This is how they calculate approach angle. Okay, you have to you have to take a, a the center of the wheel, an angle between the center of the wheel to the lowest part in the front of the bumper. Okay, and what they'll do is they'll draw a line like this. Just draw a line on the on the ground on the center of your wheel underneath your car all right then you put like a, a stick and i'm approximating now on that line that connects the two wheels on the ground and you go like that you see that see that that's my approach angle and that angle from the ground to my ski pole up there is 20 degrees from the center of the wheel a line going under the car. If I put this approximately, right? If you do this properly and you go like this, that's 20 degrees. They're the same. Approach angle is the same. Look at the rear. See the rear? There's not much rear <laughs> compared to the Outback, which is a fat pig. All right, the Outback Wilderness departure angle is terrible. approximately there that's my departure angle i think it's 20 degrees or something i'm not sure you got to look at the statistics but this one on the cross track is like 33 
it's a much better angle. I think the best approach and departure angles you'll find on the Forester. All right, but pretty good on the cross check. Both have the same uh, approach angle, so if you can't approach, you can't depart. This is something that bothers me on the wilderness. This is a 2023 wilderness, okay? And uh, this cladding, this is four months old and it's already starting to show like it's just graying. Look, it's already, I don't know if you can see that. It's already just like, this is black. This has already gone kind of gray. And you'll see here where I tried to wipe it. This is gonna turn gray quickly. It just, and if you look closely at it, it's like a matte black finish. That's gonna look like shit in a couple of years. Whereas in the cross track, I think they've upped it. I don't know if they're doing this on the 2024 Outback now, but this is a completely different, you see the stippling there? The cross track, you have to manually do this and then lift it. And then you have to manually do this. Wow, that was really hard, right? Of course, if you spend another $8,000, you can do this. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, look, it's going up all by itself. Isn't it cute? Like, okay, and then you can press this button and it goes back down. So that's a major difference. Here's something that actually really bothered me. Okay, guys, let's go inside. The Outback Wilderness has something that I like. I started push button start in both. The car tells you it's seven degrees outside. You're pointed in the northeast direction. Also, it has this smart uh, rear, uh, rear view mirror that I can program my, uh, uh, my garage door opener on this thing. I like to know that. In Canada, it's important to know when you go below zero. You're driving on the highway and you need to know, uh, you know is it plus five or is it minus five? It's gonna affect the way you drive here. Because if it's frozen, if, if there's ice, you gotta be more careful. And sometimes when I'm driving around in the woods and stuff, I like to know uh, where, where where do we go, north or south? And I glance here and it tells me what direction I'm pointing. Because I may not have this screen uh, attached with car, Apple, Play, whatever map thing, right? So so this one, that the, the Crosstrek doesn't. It has a dumb rear view mirror. This one has a smart rear view mirror. This one just has a dumb rear view mirror. Now we're inside the Crosstrek. A dumb rear view mirror. They both have this, which is nice. You just put your hand there, it beeps and it opens. As long as you're carrying your fob. And I learned here, if you press the button here twice, you can turn on this stuff without turning on your engine. Uh, look, the interior layout is a little bit different and I think I like the Crosstrek better. They have this phone, wireless recharging, and then they have three, a 2.4 amp. Can you see it? Okay, here, let's, let's watch. I'm trying to, like, I'm serious. I'm not making it, I'm gonna try and put this. There. Like, that. that is a pain in the ass. Now on the cross track, you have this huge area down here that uh, for your big, huge phones that you want a wireless charge, or if you want to plug it in there, right there. It's, you can fit your hands in there. If you want to turn on your heated seats, you have to have this infotainment system on because the heated seat button is here. Not many people know if you just press and hold, it's maximum. If you press and hold, it's off. Or you can go one, two, all the toggle through the settings there. But if you turn this thing off, you can't turn your heated seats on. All right? That, I don't like that. I don't like that. It does have temperature control a button and it has a button for your for your radio okay it has gold here on the on the shift and gold on the steering wheel the cross track has the same you know i can go like this and i go in now look at this i actually like the interior of the cross track better look at this the parking brake is here the heated seats are switches here which i like better and then the rest is the same. It has uh, temperature control and volume control there, the same. 
the same uh, front there. You get the gold on the steering wheel, but they forgot to put the gold on my uh, on my stick shift. And I think this is one of the first ones that's made and they just screwed up. I bet uh, if you order one uh, now, you know, the ones that are going to come out in six months or a year, they're going to have gold there. They, they put the cheap knob on mine. Mine has a cheap knob. I don't know why, but it does. So the best of the three, the Outback. The Outback by a country mile, okay? But it's also the most expensive, all right? The most value for money, the Crosstrek. The Crosstrek, beautiful little car, right? And for all of you guys that uh, still want the Forester, it does have more room. It's got the more, you can fit your dog kennel in the back without putting the seats down. It's got more storage, but it's more expensive than the Crosstrek and it's not as good in my opinion. You can't stop talking, right? You guys know me. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, leave some comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, you know what? I, I've got something else in my head about the horsepower and the and the uh, and the torque and stuff. Because uh, some of you are probably shaking and not understanding that. The 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 best example I can think of. This is amazing. I'm just coming to my head. I, I've rode motorcycles for a long time, and I remember once uh, I was on a ride with a friend, and I was driving my Suzuki 1250 FA, the Bandit, okay, which is an entry level bike, not a very powerful bike, not very much horsepower but known for having amazing low-end torque. That thing, uh, max torque was down almost at idle range. You, it was just incredible low-end torque. It was so user-friendly and easy to ride. My friend was in a, on a Ducati, one of the fastest bikes you could get, three times as expensive as my bike. But I noticed when he was driving, he was very tentative on the, uh, on the throttle, right? He was like, mm, just, he was driving it very, very uh, tent, uh, timidly. And I was always pulling out uh, faster than him, right? And he says, how come your bike's faster? Let's, let's, uh, let's just go zero to 100 and, and see, you know, we were on the, uh, in the middle of nowhere on a, on a, on a good highway. And we stopped and we said, yeah, let's, let's, let's take off. I'm on my uh, Bandit, Suzuki Bandit, and he's on his Ducati. And we go, I put my bike in third gear sitting still, just idling, put it in third gear off the line. He's ready to go, right? And I go, three, two, one, go. And I open the throttle in third gear. My bike has so much low end torque that it, it, it takes off in third gear because at 1,000, 1,500 RPM, I've got full torque. My bike, without changing gears, I'm at 100 in, I don't know, four or five, whatever seconds. He, he's behind me. He's d d doing the little vroom, 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 right? He's changing gears slowly like a, like a pussy. And he says, Hi, my bike's supposed to be faster than yours. What's going on? I said, well, let's switch bikes. Okay, let's switch bikes. You take my bike and, and I'll take your bike. Okay, so we switch bikes. He gets on mine and all of a sudden mine felt good to him because he's very tentative on the throttle. And he was going, oh, and he's driving it a bit. He goes, this feels like it's got some punch. I go, well, let's do the zero to 100, okay? Then we stop and I'm on the Ducati now, which uh, the Ducati has no torque at the low end, all right? You gotta get that thing up to 6,000, 6,500 RPM to hit maximum uh, horsepower and torque, right? It redlines at something like 9,000. So we're at three, two, one, go. I'm in first gear, I'm giving it a little bit vroom, vroom, vroom to, get, to get it ready, right? And then it, go, and I in first gear and I, and I get it up to 8,000 RPM before I switch to second. I'm not switching to second gear at four or 5,000 RPM or even 6,000, right? It maximum torque is at 6,000. So I overshoot that close to red line at around 8,000, 8,500 RPM because I know when I switch to second, vroom, vroom, uh, the, the, the RPM is gonna drop. It's gonna drop from 8,000 back down to, to 6,000. Well, guess what? That's maximum power still. So I'm in first gear to eight, and, vroom, 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 and I'm switching. First, second, third, fourth. Didn't even get to fourth. I think I got to third. First, second, third, like, like that, like that, like that. But I, I'm, I get the engine up to, to 8,000 RPM before I do anything. I blow him away. I, I'm, I'm done and I look back like this and he's still putzing along.
in the, in the Suzuki Bandit. And he, we get, he catches up and he stops. He goes, I've never heard my bike make a noise like that. I go, well, that bike has to be ridden at high RPM to get its harness, its power, right? Whereas the Suzuki Bandit, uh, you could drive it at 2000 RPM and, and you've got you know, full torque. A pleasure to drive in the city, in traffic. The Ducati in the city, oh, you want, you want to throw the thing in the garbage. The same with these Subarus, okay? The, the, the Outback is going to feel so much better because of the low end torque compared to the Crosstrek or the Forester. The Crosstrek and the Forester are going to feel underpowered at low RPM compared to the Outback. And if you're off, if you're doing off-roading, if you're crawling up a hill and your car is only going to be uh, at 2000 RPM, right, slowly going five kilometers an hour, trying to get up a hill or some rocky terrain, the Outback is going to have able to harness much more torque than the Crosstrek or the uh, or the uh, Forester. So there's, there's, that's that's how you got to think of it. Now, their cars, they can all get up any hill, right? Uh, if it's paved, pretty much. I mean, uh, you could drive a 1972 Pinto and, and uh, drive through the mountains and get up any hill. But I'm talking about performance and uh, how it feels when you're going off-road. The, the Outback is going to be the king. Uh, off-road and um, on the highway. Uh, so if you can afford it, Outback blows them both away. But the other two are still. I love the cross track too. So, and I, I, I made the video another ten minutes in length. So I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Thanks for watching, guys. Now leave some comments, and I okay. I'm done. I'll catch you on the next one.